Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to our Bay Area Housing Market Town Hall. First of all, just want to let everybody know that after we finish this webinar, it's going to be edited and then we'll be posting on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified right away as soon as the video becomes available. And also, of course, follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Um, we are there and sharing a lot of housing market news as well. All right, let's talk about the state of the market. I wanted to show you guys what's been going on um, in the Silicon Valley. I always kind of share the offers that we've been making and how many offers you know, these properties been receiving. We used to see double digits every time. And then last month we were like, oh, it went down to single digit, but we still see some multiple offers. And now this month you start seeing like one offer, two offers. So it definitely has, you know, seen quite a drastic change. This is from month of May, but if you look at month of March, it is completely different numbers. However, good news is that we still see numbers are not way below asking price. They are still uh, slightly, this one slightly below asking price, but a lot of them are still like at or higher um, than the asking price. And we have started seeing quite a few cash offers. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed that, um, for example, like this other screen we have, um, this one, we definitely see a lot more cash offers and some of the offers are being made off market in Cupertino, Los Altos, as you see that they are sold really quickly. And this is still $800,000 over asking price in Los Altos. There are still people who are making offers, especially the ones with cash, and they don't really require financing, they are still pretty aggressively looking for properties. At the end of the day, um, as we know that if people really need to move, they really need to move. It's just that right now, they do have a lot more options to choose from. Now, in terms of days on the market and also the sales price over list price ratio, as you see over here, that days on the market, last year, you know, the average days on the market in Santa Clara County is about 12 days, 14 days, 15 days, about two weeks. So it's really not that bad. In the beginning of the year, it was about 14 days and then came down to 10 days, which was great. And then now it just came back up one more day, it was 11 days. But what makes a big, bigger difference is that we saw it went from about 17% back in March, that was the height of the season. And then it kind of came down to about a little over 12% over asking price, although it's still pretty good. It doesn't look like what I just showed you, but obviously this still has combined with so many listings is 12,000 listings in Santa Clara County. But we definitely see some pockets of the area have started to slow down. Um, it's just that people are still making offer at and above. And we started in June, definitely started seeing some people start to make an offer below asking price though. So we'll see how, how this chart is going to look next month. Median sales price for single family in Santa Clara County. Last month, it was at $1.9 million. We kind of started seeing like it peaked in April, 1.95 in April. And then it was 1.9 in May. As of June 15, right now, it came down to 1.877,500. As for condominium and townhomes, I remember the last few months, we, I kept saying like, oh my God, it broke a million dollars for condominium and townhomes. And uh, now it came back down in June. It came back down to $960,000 as of June 15. This chart is showing uh, the orange line is the number of sales versus the number of active listings. In 2019, we've been talking about like the price actually came down a little bit. Uh, the market was a little bit slow at the time. So you see that the number of active listings versus the number of sales has a rather big gap. And then the market started to improve, right? And as you see, remember the crazy year in um, 2021, as you see, the gap has starting to shrink and it became smaller and smaller and even inverted to where here in the orange line has gone above the number of actives. But then of course, um, now we are going back to where the gap is starting to widen again uh, starting in May. So we we are expecting to see that we're going to see more and more number of active listings while the number of sales is going to be slowing down a little bit. So the gap is going to be widened again, which means that it's going to kind of, you know, reflecting back in 2019 where the market is going to slow down. Some of the pricing might come down a little bit. But I know the biggest question is that how long is this going to last? And we're going to talk a little bit more about it later. And in terms of the months of inventory, again, we, we were talking about like 2019, this time frame where the price did drop a little bit. And at the time in Santa Clara County, there were all the way up to 3.2 months of inventory. And even though right now we did see the, the market slow down, we do see that it just went from 0 0.9 months kind of came back up to 1.4 months of inventory. So it is going up, but then it's still not as high as back in 2019. 
And this one is a little bit interesting because, um, or I shouldn't say interesting, it's almost a little scary, but um, if you look at the list price decrease in Santa Clara County, in January, there were 32 listings, February 37, March 97, April 167, and then May 292. And in the first 15 days, we already have 332 units dropped in the list price. And same for San Mateo County, Alameda County, and Contra Costa County. And just, you see that the numbers has gone up quite significantly. And what is you can see here is that 15 days, we already have more than the entire month of May. So um, definitely a lot of sellers are reflecting back and dropping their price on their listings. What about withdrawn and canceled? So some of the sellers are not willing to drop their prices. I'm sure some of you guys have some of those sellers as well. It's like, hey, hey, I'm not gonna drop the price. I would much rather just withdraw my listing or cancel the listing temporarily and then put it back on the market when the market is better. So we do see that again in May, we do have a lot more withdrawn and canceled. And then in June, we have not as much as the whole entire month of May yet, but it has been keeping up. It's pretty much half of what May have already. So you see that there's definitely more and more sellers are going to say like, hey, I'm going to withdraw for now. And then let's just wait for the market to bounce back before I put it back on the market. And a lot of sellers have decided to lease their house out first because the rental market is actually really good right now. So a lot of sellers actually would much rather rent out their houses for now until the market bounce back up before they put it back on the market. And we're going to talk a little bit about like these external factors that we've been seeing on the market and on the news. But we have so many buyers ask us right right now or, or sellers, um, what's going on with the housing market? Um, how long is this slum going to last? And uh, when do you think that we should list the property? Or when do you think that we should buy? So the way we look at the housing market, there are a few external factors. The causes for inflation. We need to think about what has caused those inflation. And then, of course, there's housing supply as well. No matter what, supply and demand is the fundamental of a, an economy. And same thing for the housing economy. Uh, so we need to look at that. And then, of course, we have the Fed rate increase because of the inflation. And then the stock market fluctuate because of the Fed rate increase. And then because of stock market fluctuation, it has caused some employment, like the layoffs or hiring freezes. And also because of the Fed rate increase, uh, the 10-year bond rate also has increased and the mortgage rate therefore increase as well, which can affect a lot of people's pre-approval. So we are going to look at a few of these factors and then come up with a picture to see what you should do. Now let's look at the inflation first. We look at the 12-month change in the prices of all these different items, right? And as you see that gasoline is the one that has increased the most by 48.7% and airfare is 37.8%. And I recently just bought a ticket to go to Nashville in July. And I was so shocked because it was, it cost me a thousand dollars just to buy that plane ticket to go to Nashville. And I thought the price might come down. I was just kept waiting. I waited it for three weeks and I was like, the price is not coming down. And so I just bought it be before it goes up even higher. So plane tickets definitely have gone up quite a bit. And then of course, transportation, hotel rooms. But one thing is really interesting is that I thought like housing would be way high up there, but actually housing is not all is all the way down here, which is still high at 6.9%, but I just thought it's going to be higher. And used vehicle also has gone up quite a bit and new vehicles as well. If you're looking for cars in the last two years, I mean, I personally also have experienced that you just can't find there's no cars in the car lot, which is really strange. Craziest thing is that if you have a used car or if you have a car that you bought it, used and then you want to sell it again, you might actually make money now because the used car value has gone up so much. So the only two items that actually have gone down is rental cars and also IT hardware and services. Um, I don't know if it's true that they have gone down IT hardware and services and rental cars. I actually don't have that experience, but um, just seeing everything else, I thought everything looks like, yes, I have that experience, including appliances that's gone up. We were buying some housing supply to remodel our house. And then just by three months difference, the prices have gone up 20%. So if I didn't purchase it, 
three months ago, it would have gone up 20%. So everything just gone up pretty darn fast. And other thing, like the gasoline we mentioned, as you see, February 2020, it was a national average of 2.53 per gallon, and it has hit $5 on June 13 of this year, two years later. And then one of the reasons causing the gasoline went up, obviously, is because the Ukraine war and also the oil supply. Uh, we are not using the local oil supply in the United States. And then also we have the supply chain issues, which has started basically during this pandemic, right? We talked about it last year, I believe it was last year during one of our episodes. And you see all these um, shipping containers just parked outside of Long Beach Harbor, hundreds of them. And right now we're still suffering from it. Went from baby formulas to feminine products to, to um, lumber, so, uh, anything, pretty much anything that we're using on a daily basis is being affected right now. And also uh, another thing is the money supply. As you know, during the pandemic, the Fed had printed out quite a bit of money to help during the pandemic because a lot of people lost their jobs and they didn't have any income. So they had printed a lot of money out. So with the increase in money supply, and that has caused the inflation. So Really, this inflation was expected from two years ago. Since the beginning, as soon as they started printing money or they giving um, money away, a lot of economists had already said that inflation is going to be an issue. It's just now we are starting seeing it because we started seeing the numbers, 8.3%, 8.5%. And then every couple of months, it's like, oh, new 40 years high. And now this month, we hit 8.6% on the inflation. On top of that, the housing prices not caused by just the inflation. Housing prices caused by housing supply most mostly because demand is so much higher than housing supply. And I want to share with you guys one episode I saw and produced by Candice Nguyen uh, from NBC Bay Area. And this, this uh, program is called Overpriced, Overwhelmed, Over It. I thought she did a really excellent job because most of the time when I watch these news, I, I feel like they would kind of point finger to one party. But then she had looked at the housing pricing issues from a lot of different angles, from the landlord, um, investor's point of view, from the government politics and development side, and also the affordable housing policies and rental policies. So I thought this is a four-part episode, so definitely take a look at it on YouTube, and I think you're going to enjoy it. And one of, one of the episodes did talk about the development. There are a lot of lands being bought by developers, and they're ready to go. Developers are ready to go, but then they are stuck right now. They're not able to get it passed, and then easily we talked about is that one project, if you really want to build, let's say 10,000 units, it's going to probably take 20 years for that project from buying the property to going through all the uh, bureaucracy and then finally building it. It can take 20 years. So right now in California, we are about 2 million units short. And nationally, we have statistics that's showing from 3 to 5 million units short nationally. Just California alone is 2 million. It takes 20 years to build 10,000 units for a project. How are we going to ever catch up to meeting that demand? So this is one biggest issue that I feel like I hope our politician really understand what all these red tapes that they are putting out there is really slowing down these developments. And not only that, they have added a lot of impact fees to the developers so that it costs so much more. When the lumber cost has gone up and then uh, impact fees has gone up, there's so many taxes that are getting hit by a developer. It has become unattractive for some of them to actually go ahead and develop these massive projects. So um, I hope that somehow we're able to go through this without waiting that long because I think the government really need to help us to speed up these development process so that we can get these properties on the market and it's starting to provide affordable housing for the residents. We talked about the inflation and then because of inflation, now the government has to slow it down. And so they are controlling our economy pretty much by raising the federal rate. And in the beginning of the year, we had already talked about Federal Reserve 
planned on raising rate six times at least. And so now we are seeing another three quarter of a point increase today, uh, which is June 15th. And this is the biggest rate increase since 1994. And uh, by raising the rate, a lot of people starting to, of course, get scared, right? And the stock market they fluctuate. Sometimes when they raise rate, the stock market drop. And then today they raise rate, they say like, oh, it's great. The stock market jumped because they said, oh, now federal finally is staying tough on the inflation. Uh, believe it or not, there are a lot of economists out there saying that Federal Reserve should be raising rate by 100 basis point instead of just by 75, 75 basis point because they said that that is not hard enough. But um, the stock market kind of react accordingly, but it's just that the consumer is still not comfortable because they see the market just go one day up and then down and up and then down and up and then down. And then now all of a sudden it's just, it went down quite a bit um, in June um, last week. And then now today came back up a little bit. So no matter what, the stock market fluctuates so much that it's getting a lot of people worried. And because of that, the economy has so much uncertainties. Of course, the companies are also a little bit worried. However, we have really good unemployment rate until April. Um, if you look at national unemployment rate in April, is 36 And while California is at 46 but San Jose is at 22 uh, versus Oakland, Hayward, Berkeley at 2.9, and San Francisco, Redwood City, South San Francisco area at 2.1. So in terms of unemployment rate in the Bay Area, we're actually doing really well. But we still see some tech companies laying off people. They're saying that they're facing the biggest downturn in two decades. So far this year, tech company worldwide have laid off a total of 35,000 workers already. A lot of companies also reversing their hiring plans, like Meta, which is Facebook and Twitter. They have slowed or paused their hiring plans, while Netflix Peloton and Robinhood are laying off workers. However, I would have to say though, Netflix, Peloton, and Robinhood, they are laying off workers, not really because of the market. They have had some operational issues. So um, I, I feel like that shouldn't be relating to this whole economy. And then cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase said that it was cutting its own workforce as well by 18%, about 1,100 people. That's a lot of people that they are cutting. And then not only tech companies, real estate, of course, it has slowed down so much. Compass had cut workforce by 10%, and Redfin also had laid off 8% of its employees. Now, on top of all of that, the mortgage rates have gone up quite a bit. If we are looking at the high balance conforming mortgage rates in the Bay Area, April, it was at 4.875. Last month in May, it has gone up to 5.5. And again, June has gone up another quarter point to 5.75. And this high balance conforming loan amount is between $647,201 to $970,000 and $800. And in terms of jumbo loan, so anything that over the high balance loan limit is considered jumbo, so the larger loan amount. Jumbo 30 years fixed, it was at 4.125%. I remember back in April, people were really worried. It's like, oh my God, it has hit 4%. And um, now in May, it has gone up to 4.75 and June, it hit 5%. So it definitely has gone up quite a bit. And remember for every 1% increase, your monthly payment kind of go up by about 13%. So it can be a pretty big jump for a lot of people. Now for mortgage rate projections um, here, uh, we track Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, Mortgage Bankers Association, National Association of Realtors. They all have adjusted their projections for these quarters. For 3Q 2022, Freddie Mac is projecting at 4.8. And Freddie Mac seems to be projecting the lowest compared to other agencies, while National Association of Realtors is projecting at 5.2 for 3Q 2022. But then it continued to go up, as you see, most of them just continue to go up to 2023 2Q. However, um, Fannie Mae has shown that after 2023, 2Q is going to start coming down. And it actually seems like for Mortgage Bankers Association, they are also expecting that starting from 2023, 3Q, the interest rate might be coming back down to under 5%. So let's hope that the mortgage rate will come back down later. But it also shows that right now, there's a lot of buyers because of all these factors from we talked about in the inflation and employment rate, the supply chain issues, supply and demand, um, plus the mortgage rate increase. It has caused a lot of confusion for a lot of home buyers and home sellers. So in our panel discussion, in our next 
first video, you're going to see that we talked a lot about like how to advise home buyers and home sellers and what they should do right now during this market uncertainty. I hope I will see you guys next time and please do subscribe to our channel so that you will get notified immediately as soon as we have new videos that come on. See you. Bye.